This is Apple Valley News Now Primetime on your side. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Jill Sperling. It's October, but already we're talking mountain snow in Washington and Oregon. Stacy Lee is tracking the latest developments and joins us now with your first alert forecast. We are talking mountain snow, but we're also talking a beautiful evening out on our Dust Devil Geese, the Sky Camp tonight. 53 degrees though, so if you step outside, it's a little on the chilly side, our humidity at 48. And again, we lose about two minutes of daylight per day, sunset tonight at 556. So getting dark early and time changes in less than a month. Let's take a look at our temperature trend for the next 24 hours. Again, into the 40s, back up to the low to mid 50s. We are near 70 today, so you're definitely going to feel the cool down tomorrow. Down in the 30s tonight, Yakima up to the low to mid 50s there as well, and we're going to start to see those rain showers. Let's talk about this big storm coming through. Again, here's the setup for tomorrow. It's going to push on in, and again, all this blue coming down the Cascades is mountain snow showers, so winter weather advisories are in place through the Cascade Mountains. If you're going to do any traveling over the next couple of days, you'll definitely want to check those mountain pass reports. So clear skies tonight. Those winds finally decreasing tonight. Winter arriving to the mountains already in October, and we have a hard freeze for our lower elevations. We'll talk about that in your first alert full weather forecast. Jill. Thank you, Stacy. The Yakima County Coroner has released the identities of the three people fatally shot in Toppenish last week and of the shooter who police say took his own life. The coroner says based on the autopsies, all three victims died of gunshot wounds to the chest. Their names, 21-year-old Alicia uh, Castro, 13-year-old Isaac C., and 18-year-old Altagracia Mancias Hernandez. The shooter has been identified as 19-year-old Ramundo Lopez. The coroner says he died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Coroner's office offers our condolences to all friends and families of the deceased after this horrific, tragic event. At this time, there have been no additional updates from the Toppenish Police Department regarding the homicide. Yakima County Sheriff's deputies are investigating a homicide in Wapato over the weekend that left a 74-year-old woman dead and her 80-year-old husband in jail. Deputies say they got a call Sunday afternoon about two grandparents arguing in the 2100 block of Ashu Road. They arrived to find 74-year-old uh, Olivia Lawrence dead with a gunshot wound. After interviewing her 80-year-old husband and an adult grandchild, they determined that the husband discharged a firearm during an argument. He's now been booked into the Yakima County Jail on suspicion of first-degree manslaughter. An autopsy is scheduled for Tuesday. A Basin City man has been identified as the victim of a homicide in Franklin County. Authorities say 24-year-old Huber Perez Morales of Basin City died yesterday. His body was found in front of a home in the 200 block of Lowen Drive just before 7.30 a.m. Authorities say his death is being investigated as a homicide. If you have any information, please call Detective Sergeant Warren at the number on your screen. The West Richland woman accused in the murder of her ex-husband has been extradited to Florida. Florida authorities came and got 36-year-old Shanna Gardner last Friday and brought her back to Jacksonville Beach. She's charged with first-degree murder, solicitation to commit a capital felony, and conspiracy to commit murder. She's accused of killing 33-year-old Jared Bridegan, who is also the father of her two children. Her current husband and a former acquaintance are also charged in the case. Her next court date is November 3rd. A judge has sentenced a Walla Walla State Penitentiary Corrections Officer on drug trafficking charges. 44-year-old Leticia Rodriguez pleaded guilty to conspiracy to distribute drugs, including meth, fentanyl, and cocaine. According to court documents and proceedings, Rodriguez worked as a courier for drugs and money moved between eastern Washington, California, and Arizona for a drug trafficking ring disguised as a landscaping business. The judge sentenced Rodriguez to five years in prison plus five years federal supervision after her release from custody. Debris and items thrown at commercial vehicles now under investigation by the Washington State Patrol. Troopers say a large bolt and rocks struck the windshields of multiple commercial vehicles. It happened between 1130 at night and 3 in the morning last Thursday, Saturday and Sunday near Granger on state routes 223 and 22. It may be related to similar incidents in that area that happened over the last month. 
and troopers say those are also under investigation. If you've witnessed this or have information that could help law enforce law officers, contact Detective Derek Jacobs at 509-249-6744 or email him at the address on your screen. Washington State Patrol has been working to add more resources to its crime labs in order to keep up with the demand for DNA processing, which, depending on the case, can take anywhere from a couple of weeks to months or even years. But Apple Valley News Now's Emily Goodell tells us they're able to take additional steps toward that goal thanks to a federal grant of more than $2 million. When it comes to processing DNA, Washington State Patrol's five crime labs can only move so fast, with limited personnel and constant demands for DNA analysis. We all kind of become accustomed to watching uh, crime scene television shows where you have beautiful people get out of a van and then they are able to solve the case within just a matter of minutes. The reality is, is that it takes a lot more time. To extract DNA from the sample, determine how much there is, analyze it, and put it into CODIS, the federal DNA database. That process from beginning to end will often take a month just for one DNA sample. And so having more funding so that more samples can be tested and submitted and results received is, is key. A $2.3 million Department of Justice grant for the DNA program. It's a very crucial funding source to support our DNA program, both in the casework side and the CODIS side. Helping to cover lab tech positions, additional training, and... Equipment that we need to either it's new equipment or it's to um, replace aging equipment so that the WSP lab system has robust and reliable instrumentation. The overall goal, to improve the turnaround time for getting results. So that victims get justice more quickly, so that offenders are held accountable for the wrongdoing that uh, DNA often establishes that they committed and making the community safer. In Washington State, Emily Goodell, Apple Valley News Now. WSP Crime Lab officials say their eventual goal is to create a bigger lab in the North Sound to bring all of their services under one roof. Delicious treats for those who can't tolerate gluten, the new option available in Richland. Plus, our main concern is that Washingtonians won't be able to get the care that they need when they need it. The state of Washington facing a lawsuit regarding charity care requirements. We'll explain next. Also, an off-duty pilot now in hot water. What he's accused of doing on a flight out of western Washington that's led to dozens of attempted murder charges. And Stacey Lee is tracking the chance of snow in the Washington and Oregon mountains. Her first alert forecast is next. You're watching Apple Valley News Now. Here, freshly made grizzly bear tracks. Survival, it's not guaranteed. Good thing I got my Ford Bronco Sport, because it goes over any terrain. Get a great deal on a Bronco Sport, only at your local Ford dealer. Did you see this? It says most people are gonna need long-term care that health insurance and Medicare won't cover. I saw that, and it got me thinking, if I need to pay for home modifications or in-home care, I am not prepared. Are you? Not really. I mean, whatever happens, I just want to know that I'll be able to get care and stay in my own home as I age. Right? I want that too. So, uh... Find out how the WA Cares Fund can help. Throw away your distance and reading glasses. Join Doctors King and Kopstein for a free live webinar this Thursday at noon. And find out if RLE is right for you. K2 Vision RLE. No glasses, no contacts, no readers. Pride in your lawn is a goal shared by many homeowners. At Spring Green, they custom tailor lawn care plans that are best for our climate to make your lawn the envy of the neighborhood. Core aeration is essential in maintaining a healthy, thick lawn that will better absorb nutrients, air, and water. Tree and shrub care often get overlooked but are just as important. For healthier trees and shrubs, their two-step program will control insects, improve root health, and reduce soil compaction. Call Spring Green now to schedule a consultation. Spring Green, your neighborhood lawn care professional. Uh -oh. Next live, Heidi Gardner. Plus, live's Halloween show is coming October 31st. <laughs> Tomorrow at 9 on Apple Valley News Now. There once was a famed country music philosopher named Joe Diffie who said, if it weren't for trucks, we wouldn't have tailgates. So you know this got me thinking, if we didn't have tailgates, we wouldn't have tailgate parties. 
And I'm pretty sure if we didn't have tailgate parties, we probably wouldn't have football. And if we didn't have football, well anyway, I'm just thankful for tailgates, that's all. Here's to a great tailgate season. Come see us today and feel the power of Pingree. The nights are cooler and many Yakima Valley residents still depend on wood burning devices in their homes as their primary source of heat. New wood pellet stoves or electrical devices are much more efficient and are regulated to control emissions. They're cleaner burning and release fewer harmful air pollutants and carcinogens. Upgrade today with the help of Yakima Regional Clean Air Agency's Wood Stove Change Out Program. With rebates up to $3,800, you could get a new device at little or no cost to you if you qualify. Call today. Here, freshly made grizzly bear tracks. Survival, it's not guaranteed. Good thing I got my Ford Bronco Sport, because it goes over any terrain. Get a great deal on a Bronco Sport only at your local Ford dealer. Portions of Apple Valley News Now, sponsored by Lord's Health and Trio's Health, making communities healthier. Welcome back. The Washington State Hospital Association is now suing the state over concerns about charity care requirements. Alyssa Warner is here and Alyssa, you've been digging into this case. What exactly is happening here? Well, first of all, I want to say charity care is not the problem here. This is the latest step in something that's been going on for several years and it's been expanding in the state of Washington. Now, as of last summer, July 2022, the state legislature changed the rules about who qualifies for free or reduced price care in hospitals. The Washington State Hospital Association worked with lawmakers on that. Everyone's okay with it. But WSHA tells me the problem now is how the Department of Health is choosing to interpret the law. The way that the Department of Health is reading the law now, um, after 34 years of reading it one way, is um, yes, anyone could come from anywhere in the world and if they meet the financial threshold requirements, yes, they'd be able to get access to um, whatever care was deemed to be medically necessary for them, whether they're coming from far away to access, you know, complex cancer treatments that might be available here, or they're coming to Washington from Idaho to get more routine types of care, um, we're, we're concerned that for communities um, all over the state, it cr could create problems getting access to care. Now, I mentioned that the state changed the rules last year about who gets a break on paying for medical care. It means that people here in Washington have some of the best access to charity care in the entire country. This even as hospitals are still struggling to keep up with demand. So we're going to take an in-depth look at those numbers, what they mean for you the next time you need to head to the hospital, coming up in about 10 minutes right here on Apple Valley News Now. From Apple Valley News Now, first alert weather with Stacy Lee. And after a bit of an overcast day, we saw those skies clear. It's nice and clear, but on the cool side, our Legends Casino uh, Columbia Point Tower Cam tonight, 53 degrees. Now we're nearly to 70 today, so quite the cool down, uh, of course, past dark in our sunset tonight at 5 at 56. We're tracking our first big Pacific storm of this fall slash winter season, and it's going to be a doozy. It's bringing quite a bit of snow. In fact, this area in blue, you'll start to see uh, some heavy snow in the northern Cascades of Washington, and that will continue from Tuesday into Wednesday and bring snow all the way down into the Oregon Cascades. So we're looking at a nice band of snow all through the area that should start to pick up tomorrow afternoon, midday uh, from the north traveling south by the evening. So again, we're going to keep an eye on that and then you'll see that snow continue to fall uh, to the east of the Columbia Basin Tri-Cities, even seeing some snow here in the Blue Mountains. Now the potential for snow through Wednesday morning, we're talking four to six inches for Snoqualmie Pass, another eight to 12 inches at White Pass, East slopes of the Cascades, also another five to eight inches there, and the blues picking up anywhere from three to six inches. So this is our first big storm of the season. Exciting for those of us that love snow, not so much for everyone else. My advice is to check the mountain passes 
uh, before you hit the road here in the next 48 hours. Here's future cast and again we start to see the uh, showers come into the south of the Columbia Basin Tri Cities Tuesday afternoon around one. Now we see the heavy rain showers and even the snow start to fall on the east slopes of the Cascades as the day continues. Heavy snow will continue to fall, fall on the northern Cascades all the way down. Lots of rain through the Columbia River Gorge into Walla Walla and even seeing some snow falling here in the blues. Now we'll continue to track that into tomorrow night. This is when we're going to see our heaviest snowfall Tuesday after eight o'clock or so. Again, once the sun goes down and those temperatures cool, rain showers through the Columbia Basin into the uh, foothills of the blues. And again, we'll have uh, snow falling here in the Blue Mountains. So pretty good storm. We'll see that start to taper off sometime after midnight or so on Wednesday. But again, there's still the potential for some stray showers and more scattered snow showers across those upper elevations into the Columbia Basin. So pretty good first big round, big storm for the season. Exciting, right? All right, let's take a look uh, at our uh, future cast or excuse me, our temperature trends. That's the other big news here for the lower elevations. We go from the uh, 60s today dropping down into the 50s over uh, the next two days, all the way down into the 40s. Again, well below our average, close to 20 degrees below. And then we travel the same route into the Yakima Valley with those temperatures in the low 40s. You're going to see those uh, temperatures really uh, start to drop overnight as well as we get ready for a hard freeze. We are going to track some breezy to gusty winds Tuesday afternoon uh, into uh, as that storm passes through the region. You'll see those gusty winds picking up here along the foothills of the Blues Columbia Basin, similar to uh, what we had today in the Gorge and in the Kittitas Valley. So again, those breezy and gusty winds are definitely here. Temperatures overnight tonight, 30s and 40s through the area. Tomorrow look for uh, the big cool down as our daytime highs only make it to the 50s. And again, we're getting ready for a first alert weather day Wednesday to Saturday due to a cold hard freeze. Look at these temperatures dropping down into the 20s and they're going to stay that way all the way into the weekend at least and possibly into next week. And again, look for those showers. Now those showers, we could see a little mixed precip, especially here at the foothills of the blues with those overnight lows below freezing. So a lot to talk about. Lots of active weather headed our way, and your reason to smile is coming up in just a few minutes. Jill. Thank you, Stacy. A frightening flight on a plane out of western Washington. We've got the uh, guy that tried to shut the engines down uh, out of the cockpit. What happened that led to the arrest of an off-duty pilot? That's next on Apple Valley News Now. Welcome to Tony's Big Cheese Pizza. How may I help you? I want some of that amazing cheese bread. I want chicken wings. I want pizza and breadsticks, please. You'll love Tony's Big Cheese Pizza in the plaza at 24 and Nob Hill. Now's the time to get a great deal on select Kubota equipment. Part of the number one rated tractor brand for durability and owner experience in the U.S., they offer the versatility and reliability to get the job done right all year round. Right now at participating dealers, get a Kubota compact tractor for zero down, 0% 0 APR for 84 months. Find a Kubota dealer near you at gokubota.com. There is a place where magic seems to hide around every corner, where cherished memories are born in twinkling snowflakes, where enchanting adventures await all who explore. Where is this real life winter wonderland? Nestled by the lake is Coeur d'Alene's Holiday Light Show, an experience you will never forget. Discover Santa's all-new North Pole with holiday getaways starting at only $250. Get 2.9% APR for 36 months plus 1500 purchase allowance on the 2024 XT5 and XT6 when you finance through Cadillac Financial. There's nothing better than the delightful, dozing, dreamy drowsiness that comes with the perfect mattress. And at Denver Mattress, finding your perfect mattress has never been easier. And during the incredible value sale, the more you buy, the more you save. Save 100 bucks on every 1000 you spend. Or take 10% off our entire Denver Mattress brand lineup. Plus four years no interest and free shipping. Score some sweet savings on some serious shut-eye. Only at Denver Mattress. 
the easiest way to get the right mattress. Shelby's Floral, your homegrown neighbor with worldwide connections for over 45 years. Shelby's, more than just a flower shop, specializing in beautiful custom arrangements, live plants, silk florals, home decor, and all things fall. We're unique and we're here for all of life's occasions. Shelby's Floral at the corner of Clearwater and Edison in Kennewick. Stop by today and let our experienced designers help you with all of your floral needs. Shelby's Floral. Welcome to Tony's Big Cheese Pizza. How may I help you? A large Mexican pizza, please. Every pizza is made fresh from scratch daily using our family dough and sauce recipe. You'll love Tony's Big Cheese Pizza in the Plaza at 24 and Nob Hill. Welcome back. A terrifying incident. An off-duty pilot allegedly tried shutting off the engine of an Alaska Airlines passenger flight. It happened on a flight that took off from Everett in western Washington. It was diverted and landed safely in Portland. Authorities say the suspect is charged with 83 counts of attempted murder. ABC's Melissa Adon has the details. A frightening moment aboard an Alaska Airlines flight with 84 passengers and crew on board when authorities say an off-duty pilot tried to turn off the engine. Authorities arresting Joseph David Emerson, who they accuse of sitting in the flight deck jump seat, which is in the plane's cockpit, and unsuccessfully attempted to disrupt the operation of the engines. We've got the uh, guy that tried to shut the engines down uh, out of the cockpit, um, and he uh, doesn't sound like he's causing any issue in the back right now. I, I think he's the dude. The plane was scheduled to fly from Everett, Washington to San Francisco, but diverted late Sunday to Portland following a credible security threat related to an authorized occupant in the flight deck jump seat. Alaska Airlines says the captain and first officer quickly responded and that the engine power was not lost. The flight crew, the captain and the first officer stopped him from doing that, got him tied up and uh, taken out of the cockpit in one form or another and then landed the airplane safely. The off-duty pilot was booked on 167 charges, 83 counts of attempted murder in the first degree, 83 counts of recklessly endangering another person, and one count of endangering an aircraft in the first degree. The T-handle, which is what this individual tried to pull on each engine, actually turns the engine off and prepares it for a fire extinguisher. But you can get them back on by pushing it in, but you've got to go through a relight procedure. The problem is, at high altitude, you can get the engines restarted. At low altitude, there could be a fatal result. Officials now trying to determine a motive. That was Melissa Adon reporting. A federal official briefed on the probe tells ABC Emerson was scheduled to be part of the flight crew on a 737 flight departing from San Francisco. A preliminary review of his work history shows a clean service record. Well, tonight we are talking about charity care in Washington and new concerns from hospitals about who qualifies. Alyssa, this is something you have been covering for a while. What is charity care? <laughs> So basically, this is making sure that people who need to go to the hospital and can't afford it can still get the care that they need. Now, what's happening the, in Washington, the rules changed recently. At a large hospital, if you make less than three times the federal poverty level, you qualify to have your entire out-of-pocket bill wiped out. Now, for 2023, that means you would have to make less than $43,470 per year as a single person, the number is higher if you're providing for a family. At smaller hospitals, or if you make more than three times the federal poverty level, you could still qualify for discounted care. Now, if you're curious about where you fall on the scale, we have a link to the Attorney General's eligibility calculator over on our website, applevalleynewsnow.com. And when it comes to eligibility, does it matter if you have insurance or not? It doesn't matter if you have insurance. It doesn't matter even if you're a U.S. citizen or not. And that is actually where this lawsuit that we've been talking about comes in because the Washington State Hospital Association says the Department of Health is now telling them to offer this charity care to everyone who comes in the door of a Washington hospital. We have a very high minimum wage here in Washington, especially when you compare it to the rest of the world. And hospital officials are worried that if this change takes effect, they'll just be overwhelmed by demand. So right now, they're asking a judge in Thurston County to step in and just keep things the way they are right now. All right, you said earlier that uh, people don't have to be a U.S. citizen in order to get charity care. What are the parameters there? So the Washington State Hospital Association tells me if somebody comes in right now for emergency care, they will get it, regardless of where you're from. 
But if someone who's not a Washington resident comes in, they need regular hospital care, they can't afford it, something like cancer treatment, then the hospital has some flexibility to say yes or no, depending on how much space they have. All right, thanks, Alyssa. We'll keep our eye on this. Just imagine if you could walk into a college classroom on your very first day and have another student who's been there before and is ready to answer all the questions that aren't covered by the syllabus. Things like, how do I get extra help if I need it? Well, that's exactly what's happening at WSU Tri-Cities thanks to the Learning Assistance Program. Today, WSU Tri-Cities announced a $150,000 donation from Bechtel that will help support the program, which hires students to act as learning assistants in the classroom. WSU is taking advantage of finding ways to actually stimulate people and stimulate the learning. Because, you know, without that, especially amongst first-time college goers, you know, they don't have a knowledge of how things work. So this allows that program to create an opportunity for them to work with others and, and, and sort of you know, get that ability to ask questions that they may be afraid to sort of ask to a professor in a big college classroom environment. The donation also supports the Bechtel Tutoring Center, which is on the WSU Tri-Cities campus inside the Consolidated Information Center. Tonight, we're continuing our superintendent sit-down conversations. We're asking what the most important things are to school districts and what problems education systems face. Apple Valley News Now's Riley Fitzgerald spoke with Walla Walla Public Schools Superintendent Wade Smith. What are some of the goals for the 2023 to 2024 school year for the Walla Walla Public Schools? Yeah, great question. You know, we are, it's such an exciting time here in Walla Walla Public Schools as we, uh, uh, kick off our Vision 2030, our new strategic plan. And so this is, as this builds off our previous uh, plan that expired this school year as we launch into the next seven years. And we're really focused on four primary goals. And many of these are a continuation of the great work uh, that has been accomplished these last seven to eight years around ambitious learning for all students, around making sure our classrooms provide the relevant and rigorous educational experience for all kids, making sure we focus on our culture of equity and belonging. And last, but certainly not least, one of the uh, strategic plan uh, goals I'm so very excited about is a renewed partnership with both parents, family, and community in our school systems. What are some of the challenges that you're facing in achieving these goals? I view it more as an opportunity, and I think, you know, in the onset and, and as we've wrapped up the pandemic and we look back, one of the things we really missed was that partnership with families and community. I mean, for better part of a year, again, we our schools locked, uh, were, able, were forced to lock parents, families and community out of our school system because of the safety and, and situations surrounding the pandemic. How do we re-engage our family and parents back into our schools? How do we re-engage our community, our retirement population, our businesses back into our school systems? And that's one thing we're really focused on because in Walla Walla, we have such an incredible asset of, of parent community support, and we want them to feel comfortable coming back into our schools and finding ways and mechanisms for them to engage in our classroom settings, whether it's a grandparent wanting to read to a student, whether it's a, a parent or a retiree wanting to come in and maybe shelve books in the library or volunteer in a kindergarten classroom to see the magic that happens every single day in our schools and across our classrooms. That's an opportunity I know many of our community want to participate in, and our goal as a district is how do we bring them into that and, and provide that mechanism for them to re-engage in our school systems. You were mentioning the pandemic. How did the pandemic affect uh, students in the Walla Walla Public Schools? Well, you know, again, great question. Like, like I think we've seen across our state and nation, deeply impacted our community, our students, our faculty. We all are still reeling in the impact of the pandemic. What I am very proud of is how our community rallied around our youth. We had so many agencies, whether it was the, the YMCA and, and other, uh, again, not-for-profits who, again, helped support our students during that transitional time, supporting a uh, safe place for them to learn remotely. Uh, our parents who just stepped up with yeoman's uh, expectations and, and abilities to, to reach their students and support their students during that distance learning model. But no doubt our students struggled with that, uh, both the isolation and how do we re-engage them back into the school setting. And you know, obviously the social emotional health deeply concerned about in some of the um, uh, programs that I'm very pleased is how we've partnered with our, the health center. It's a non-for-profit that offers uh, counseling for our middle school and high school students in our, in our school settings. We've uh, leveraged Hazel Health, a teletherapy uh, uh, program that helps bridge that gap when parents and students need access to mental health therapy that can sometimes take months, if not multiple 
of months to get in to see a local uh, clinician. How do we provide this teletherapy to bridge that gap, to provide that uh, immediate and urgent support, and then help that student transition into some uh, private uh, mental health therapy sessions? So we're really s continuing to wrap our, our supports around our students from the social emotional aspect, and really as we've come together as an entire community in support of our students. That was Riley Fitzgerald reporting. We have more news ahead, but first, Stacey Lee has your reason to smile. And this should make you smile because it's a gorgeous photo, fall colors in the Cascades. It's coming to us from our friend Linda Blazing. Thank you, Linda, for snapping this picture. Apparently, she went up and checked out those fall colors over the weekend. Remember, if you'd like to share your reason to smile photo, just snap that photo and send it to slee at applevalleynewsnow.com. Your Reason to Smile is brought to you by West Richland Family Dental and Prime Dental in Pasco. Operation Best Friend on Good Morning Northwest, sponsored by Windermere Group One. Shelter out here, it's the most important thing. But the good thing is my Ford F-150 provides enough power to keep working. Get a great deal on an F-150 only at your local Ford dealer. Sleep Shop and Furniture has expanded to celebrate all living room furniture is up to 35% off. A queen size gel mattress for only $399 on hand with immediate delivery. Up to 18 months same as cash and no credit financing available. Quality furniture, affordable prices. The nights are cooler and many Yakima Valley residents still depend on wood burning devices in their homes as their primary source of heat. New wood pellet stoves or electrical devices are much more efficient and are regulated to control emissions. They're cleaner burning and release fewer harmful air pollutants and carcinogens. Upgrade today with the help of Yakima Regional Clean Air Agency's Wood Stove Change Out Program. With rebates up to $3,800, you could get a new device at little or no cost to you if you qualify. Call today. The 2023 Honda Accord is a car and driver 10 best. The Toyota Camry is not. In fact, Camry's only made the 10 best list three times, while Accord's made the car and driver 10 best list 37 times. More times than any other car. That means year after year, the American-built Accord blows Camry away. And right now, well-qualified buyers can get the Honda Accord with 2.9% APR financing. For details, see your Southeastern Washington Honda dealer. Prosser Memorial Health orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Jeffrey B. Higgs, is now seeing patients at Prosser Orthopedic Center providing sports medicine and orthopedic care. His services include arthroscopic surgery, sports injuries treatment, shoulder instability, rotator cuff and replacement surgery, knee reconstruction, and more. To schedule an appointment with Dr. Higgs, call Prosser Orthopedic Center at 509-786-5599 or learn more at prosserhealth.org. This is how we care. Does your bath or shower need a remodel? Bath Fitter can do it all. We will remove your existing fiberglass tub or shower and replace it with a custom crafted shower or soaker tub. All made in America at our state of the art factory. We rebuild your walls with new drywall and install a custom made tub or shower with seamless walls in as little as one day. All work is guaranteed and built to last. Call your locally owned Bath Fitter store now to book your free in-home estimate or visit bathfitter.com. Every 15 minutes, someone is involved in a semi-truck collision in the U.S. Whatever the cause, big trucks mean big crashes, resulting in serious, even fatal injuries, large medical bills, and loss of wages. If you've been injured in a crash with a big rig, call Abeta Nelson Injury Law today. We've handled the most big truck accidents in Central Washington over the last 40 years, recovering millions for our clients. Abeta Nelson, we take your injury personally. Uh -oh. Next live, Heidi Gardner. Plus, live's Halloween show is coming October 31st. <laughs> Tomorrow at 9 on Apple Valley News Now. Shelter out here, it's the most important thing. But the good thing is my Ford F-150 provides enough power to keep working. Get a great deal on an F-150 only at your local Ford dealer. From Apple Valley News Now, First Alert Weather with Stacy Lee. 
And let's talk about our first big winter storm, a Pacific storm headed our way. It's developing tonight. It's cool and clear tonight, but it's moving in from the Pacific. And again, it's kind of coming down from the north and swooping in from the Pacific all at the same time. That's going to bring some pretty substantial snow, especially to the northern portion of the Cascades in Washington. But we are going to see uh, snow all the way down into the Oregon Cascades as well. Here's what this is looking like. It's going to kick off tomorrow midday ish and then make its way on down throughout the day into the evening and continue through the day overnight. We'll also see some snow developing here. Uh, rain showers mainly in our elevation, but we'll see some snow showers developing across the Blues and the Wallowas as well. So anybody taking any sort of road trip, you need to check those pass reports. Snoqualmie Pass, four to six inches. That's pass level. Uh, White Pass, which is a higher pass, actually is going to see anywhere from eight to 12 inches. Again, if you use any of these two routes, you'll want to check those in that I-84 corridor, of course, through uh, the Dead Man's Pass area. You're going to want to check that as well because we could see some potentially heavy snow on I-84 between Pendleton and LeGrand. So we're going to keep an eye on that. Let's time things out. Fairly clear tonight, but we'll start to see those clouds moving in by early morning. By midday, we're going to start seeing those showers hours mainly to the south of the Tri Cities and uh, to the e or to the west of Yakima. But there's that snow. There's the heavy showers over the Cascades that will continue to brew all day long. 5 p.m. heavier snow showers and again even the east slopes of the Cascades could see anywhere from 5 to 8 inches. We'll continue to see those showers coming through the area and snow starting to fall in the blues as well. So again, that's that I-84 corridor that gets rarely dangerous and lots of snow. But again, the majority of this one will be across the Cascades. Cascade Mountains. It'll start to break apart on Wednesday overnight, uh, Tuesday into Wednesday morning, but we'll still see some remnants of that with scattered showers and snow showers through the Pacific Northwest. So pretty good storm again, and it's even going to be more intense as it heads to the east towards the Rockies. But again, there's those uh, rain showers continuing. So pretty active weather, exciting stuff for the first uh, storm of the season. It's clear tonight. Again, you can probably see some great stars out there. 52 degrees. Winds are light right now, eight miles per hour. Let's talk about those temperatures now. Lower elevation, our big deal is we're going to cool way down nearly 20 degrees below the average over the next seven days. And with our daytime highs only making it into the 40s, well, you can guess what those overnight lows are going to be doing. We're also going to be tracking some breezy and gusty winds as that storm starts to push through later tomorrow afternoon. That's when we see these winds pick up along the foothills of the Blues into the Kittitas Valley and the Columbia River Gorge. Those winds stay with us through uh, early Wednesday morning morning and we'll even see the winds continue to be breezy to gusty through Wednesday evening. So just be aware of that. Our temperatures tonight again, we're in the 30s and 40s through the area. Grab a coat. You're going to need it for your morning commute tomorrow. As far as tomorrow's daytime high goes, look at this only hitting the 50s kind of where we are today. We're only going to be a few degrees warmer for the daytime high. Now we are going to call a couple of weather alert days due to these low temperatures. Again, it's a hard freeze for Yakima, for Ellensburg, for the Columbia Basin foothills of the Blues, those temperatures drop pretty rapidly from 41 overnight on Tuesday down to 28 degrees. And again, uh, if it is raining during those early morning hours, you could even see some rain mixed with snow. We might see that here closer to the foothills of the Blues, the Walla Walla area. So temperatures dropping rapidly, overnight lows very cold, hard freeze on the way. A couple of weather alert days coming your direction. I'll get to more and I'll explain it all with your seven day planning forecast. Jill. Thank you, Stacy. Hurricanes in the Atlantic Ocean are now twice as likely to strengthen into more powerful storms in less than a day. That according to a new study from Rowan University. Over the past few decades, it found hurricanes are twice as likely to become Category 3 storms or stronger within 24 hours. Quickly forming hurricanes make it harder to forecast, prepare and evacuate, which can lead to more disasters. One example, Hurricane Maria in 2017, which went from a Category 1 to a Category 5 in less than 24 hours before landfall. You can find that story in Journal Scientific Reports. Students from wealthy families benefit the most from early decision applications at universities. That, according to a study by the Harvard-based research group Opportunity Insights. Under the early decision option, students can pick their top choice school and apply months before the regular application deadline. The choice is binding, but students get a better chance of admission and an earlier answer. Anyone can apply. However, it presents a challenge for students who need to compare financial and 
aid and off, uh, offers from multiple schools. Whether you have to make the switch to gluten-free food or it's a personal choice, it can be difficult to find a variety of options at the grocery store. But a new business is aiming to provide some more choices. Tina's Tasty Treats is now open at the Uptown Shopping Center in Richland, and I got the chance to speak to the husband and wife team behind it. Tina Pack says she won't sacrifice flavor in her gluten-free food items. If you're not enjoying it, you're not coming back to buy it. She and her husband, Sean, are the owners of Tina's Tasty Treats, which recently opened a brick and mortar store at the Uptown Shopping Center. Uh, it went really well. You can even see my cases are almost empty again, so these were full. The journey to get here has been a long one, starting with some medical issues about 12 years ago that required Tina to make a lifestyle change. The doctor recommended taking me off a bunch of things and gluten being the main one. And I looked around and went, if you need gluten free in this area, where do you go? With the help of her husband, Tina started selling her baked goods and Sean's sourdough bread at local farmers markets. And these items were a hit. I look around at what's going on, what's out there. And it's like, can we do better? And we connected up with some really great gluten free flour sources that I noticed nobody else was using and it made a superior product. You know, we buy fresh local fruit. If it doesn't need as much sugar, we don't add it because I'm not trying to cover up for buying cheap fruit. While their business grew, the physical building took a while to get going. We were like, you know, we're going to be open in June. And obviously that was really funny. Um, and so just the things, the hiccups that we had with workers coming in here to, to update the electrical and the um, we had a guy who couldn't do anything for nine weeks. With the store now open, Tina and Sean have plans to expand, growing their menu and always working to improve their product. The current store hours are Tuesdays to Fridays from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturdays 8 to 4. Well, let's take a final look at the weather. Stacy. Oh yes, well we've got beautiful weather for the next seven days. Again, we're looking for a couple of alert days as we head on out into the next couple of days. Look for those temperatures 55 Tuesday and then we drop into the 40s. Those overnight lows in Yakima down into a hard freeze category. 20s for the forecast for the next several days overnight. So again, get those items winterized out there and get ready for uh, again that cold weather to continue through the rest of our region. So Jill, I guess hopefully everybody but he's ready for the super cold weather as we head into the rest of the week. I'm not sure I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for watching. You can find the latest on our website, applevalleynewsnow.com.